The blood. All right, let's see. So let's go through these questions. How are these questions for you guys? They were okay? Oh, good. We're getting the hang of it. So let's see. Blood is fluid that guided through vessels to reach substance through the body. It's roughly 8% of one's body weight. Technically, blood's connective tissue has the three components. We talked about the tissue a little bit in there, right? The connective tissue always has cells and other stuff. And the other stuff is always fiber and then something else, ground substance. So in the bone, that's calcium stuff. In the blood, that's liquidy stuff. Um, so plasma, blood plasma makes the liquid. That's the ground substance. We also have fibers in, um, in the blood. We don't see those fibers. They are, they are invisible. They are soluble, and when we need them, they become insoluble. Uh, we'll talk about that. That's a blood loss question. That's a coagulation question. It's very interesting. But let's list the cellular components of blood. What are they? Rhombocytes. There you go. You all got that. You know you can take the quiz as many times as until you get all the points, right? Unless I have. And I didn't get anybody telling me something was wrong. So this quiz was good. Huh? Yeah. I read through it. All right. Let's see what we got. That puppy. Um, there you go. Right there. First page, huh? So when we look at it, we got the cellular components, those are there. Thrombocytes equal platelets, white blood size equal leukocytes. I already get to them in a minute. And then the extracellular matrix is that blood plasma, that's the liquid stuff, almost watery. And then the fiber. And again, in blood, you cannot see the fiber. Did you say blood plasma was watery? Yeah, it's like the liquidy stuff. It's got stuff in it, but it's pretty liquidy. Yeah. To transport you. All the cells, uh, blood make up 45% of the, the, the total blood volume. What term do we need use to express that number? The metacrit. You got that? It's in the book, right? Somewhere. Yeah, it usually goes along with the book. Right there. So that's only that's only uh, the cells themselves, not the liquid stuff, not the fibrous stuff. So that's what the hematocrit is. If it's higher, you get a little thicker blood. If it's lower, a little thinner blood. And then blood money functions. It can, for example, pick up excess heat produced by the organs and carry those to the skin surface. That's when you get all blush and it gets all warm on the skin surface and it radiates off. That's kind of cool. Another example, the white blood cells help us defend against invaders that we don't want. What jobs do the red blood cells have? Hmm. From the lungs to the body, good. Oxygen right here. That will be the white blood cells again, the defenders. Uh, and that will be the platelets the broken vessels. You want to associate thrombocytes or platelets with fixing, repairing broken vessels. And then transporting the, to the hormones to body cells, that's just generally what happens in them. Uh, that, that the blood itself is a transport medium for many things, including glucose and, and um, hormones, of course. So let's see what we got here. Metabolic waste also. So there's the oxygen, and there's the immune system, which is going to come to that. Oh, that's all text. RBCs are cells that don't have a nucleus. So they're bags of hemoglobin, basically. And they look like discs with both sides bending in. You saw that the shape is great because it makes them flexible, so you can squeeze through stuff like tiny, tiny vessels. And also, basically, since your bag's filled with hemoglobin, you have the oxygen attached to the hemoglobin. So in the red blood cells, when the, the shape is kind of like this, 
all the hemoglobins in here are the same, um, you know, a fairly decent distance from the surface where the oxygen has to come in. It's not like a round cell and you've got to travel all the way to the center, that'd be too far. So it's kind of nice how that structure, again, the shape dictates what it can do. Structure dictates the function. So I like that. So I walk out, oh, we talked about the walk gas attaches to it. All right, oxygen, well, just make sure you all pay attention. I know you. Okay, that's good. So, oh, and then here we also, the, the heat, I talked about the heat and the function. You got that, right? The radiation can come out of the body to the surface and that. It's the same when you got cold, you get all like, everything goes to the center to keep it warm. Who cares about losing the finger when you can keep having the organs work on the inside? Um, and then the blood coagulation is when we break a vessel, how the heck are we gonna stop that blood from just squirting out? And what we get there, that's where the fibers come in, and they patch it up, and then that's where the platelets come in. So you can't see when you there's platelets in there, so. And they all make it sticky and patch this up, and then the red blood cells also get caught in there. And then you stop bleeding. I know, I was like, I thought it was Van Gogh or something. Two days this last week, I caught shaving like, my ears, you know, starts halfway coming off. Uh, I had a straw hat after that, so I look like Mango, I guess. But, you know, the painter, right, he caught his ear on that guy. Um, um, but it's, the stuff bleeds out, man. Everything, it's like, it's a lot of blood. Takes, I don't know, five minutes or so, then it gets, that takes place, and, and that will help. And of course, we got blood vessels on the inside of the body, too, so we got to patch those up, too. It's not just to the surface. So that's good. I like that. Um, Oh, look, there's the RBCs. Look, the squeezing, the way that they're shaped, the disc shape. Mm -hmm. um, that's about what we need to worry about that. And hemoglobin and oxygen go together. You know that, right? And look at how many self you've got. Look at that. One cubic millimeter. You know how much that is? Like, you know, millimeter to a millimeter to a millimeter is like that. You can't use it as a dice. It's too small. Wait. That's that many in that little thing. That's a lot, like, a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, and we make them really, really fast as well. I don't know where that speed, speedometer of how fast we make them is, but we make them very nicely fast. Okay, let's go to the next question here. RBCs only live about three months before they get broken down and delivered. Oh, look, that's where we, how fast we make them. 160 million every minute. So, you know, you feel lazy, you lay it around, you know your body working, so you're good. <laughs> RBCs are made of red bone, in a red bone marrow. We talked about, when we talked about bone, the, the, all the, the cells for blood are made in the bone marrow. Um, oh, and then a hormone from the kidneys regulates how many we want to make. Because they bring the oxygen, the red blood cells bring the oxygen to the tissue. So if there's not enough oxygen in the tissue, or you know the perfusion not good, we gotta make more red blood cells. So if you like go to a place like high altitude where you don't have as much oxygen in the atmosphere, like Colorado Springs, you go train for the Olympics up there, you make more red blood cells, and then you got a competition, you come down to sea level, and you got extra blood cells that can carry extra oxygen to the tissue and you've got a lot of oxygen in the air, you're good. It's so it doesn't cause a problem. natural doping. Huh? Oh, it doesn't cause a problem making more red blood cells than coming down. Well, I, you know, that's a good question. I mean, they do blood doping where they actually squirt in red you know, blood cells. And that's dangerous, I think. Ooh. Like, I mean, it's not naturally, but if it's naturally, you've got to kind of, I'm sure there is a risk somewhere. But you know, I just saw a thing on, in Eastern Germany you know, the DDR, the, the, the 80s, 70s and 80s, they're Olympic people, they were always winning stuff. And then when the doping came through, of course, they were all doping. But then they made a facility on the ground where they artificially kept the oxygen levels low, 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 and had them train to do that blood doping thing. So yeah, yeah, and we have, oh, Colorado Springs is where we have a, train, a big training facility for the US. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so high up. So that's kind of cool. What's the hormone called that makes sure we, the kidneys release the hormone that makes sure we have enough of these? The first one. The first one. You can't say that. Erythropoietin. Yeah, no, you can't. Mm. <laughs> no, right? Like a 
Twist toddler class. So to speak. All right, let's see where that's at. So that's right on that slide. So the low blood oxygen, kidneys, well, I guess liver tula, make a root for poetin, go into the bloodstream. I don't know where the liver comes in with this. That we gotta restart, figure that out. But it's the best picture I found, so we leave it there. Erythropo in my role is the kidneys, from what I know. Erythropoietin, bloodstream, bone marrow, make more. That's how that goes. So it's a positive feedback, I mean negative feedback loop. And it's only 120 days that they live, and then they go back. Okay. Good. I guess that's all we need to really know right there about the red blood cells. Now we go to the white blood cells. They give us the immunity. Thank God. Um, some of their numbers increase during an infection. We call that leukocytosis, and osis is a disease kind of thing, a pathology state when you see osis. You can deal that when you get the flu, the lymph nodes in your neck swell up and they hurt. You ever had that? No, you've never been sick. Well, they, that's why the doctor goes in here and pal well, I don't know if they do that anymore. They used to go palpate in here and like, oh yeah, they're small. Uh, what well, can leukopenia, which means when we don't have enough, penia means little. So that's always when you say penia, you see is not enough or something. What does that, could that indicate? <coughs> Choose all that apply, uh oh. Where is it, leukopenia? Usually indicating. Cancer. Drugs for us, big one. See that? So we got drugs. Oh, oh I should have marked them up. Drugs and cancer. Yeah, not marking them. I know we're covering blood, and the RBC, the WCs are discussed later today. However, many of them live throughout the body in the tissues where they are needed. Others use the bloodstream as a means of transport. Damage to a tissue uh, releases chemicals that signal that my blood cells need to go somewhere. So it's like alarm bells are ringing, chemically speaking. So then they can squeeze what the white right blood cells do. Then when they hear that chemical signal, they squeeze through the blood vessels. Well, first they travel in the bloodstream, it's like a freeway get to the closest exit, squeeze out, and then get to the problem where there's a cup in the skin or something like that. And uh, what is the word, well, <laughs> what does the word diapodidis mean? Squeezing through the blood. Dio means through, P means foot. Pedestrian, it's the same word. Dio, pedestrian, is that one, right? So, yeah, that's, you want to look at these words like that, you know. When you see dio, think it's like, it's like a, something can go through it. And pedesis means foot. So that's what that is. Good. White blood cells are selfless. They die defending our, your body. They love you that much. If there is pus in a wound, know that neutrophils perish in a battle to save you. Neutrophils are the most numerous red blood cells and the first to arrive at the site of injury. They are filled with little granules containing enzymes that neutralize pathogens which are foreign substances that harm you. You know that, right? Pathogens are the things that come in and make you sick. Good. Uh, what is the main job, oh, of eosinophils? Uh -oh. Look at that, we're going right through those suckers. So let's talk about them real quick. Neutrophils, let me go through them and, and sort of give you what I want you to know about. Okay. And you have your test review, right? You got the test review thing? We'll talk, come afterwards, make sure, because I want to make sure when we get through this material, go through with the test review for what you need to know for the exam. Like, understand it all, and then go through the test review to prep for the test. Do not try to memorize all the stuff. It's too much. <laughs> but you know, it take me, it like takes me years myself to get through these classes, and so often it's like, oh, that's what they meant? Oh, that's, it's like a similar, so I wanted to give you as much of an overview as I can, and that way, you know, 
I don't know, we can go with more material and not everything has to be tested. Because you're going to remember it back when it comes back next time. I just had a meeting with the, the head of the department and she, she said the students come from this class, they're well prepared for the next class. That's good. She, she said she, she could tell who took the 24. Like, ah. Anyway, neutral, yes, ma'am. For the uh, lab, yes. Okay. For the test, the other one, no. That's multiple choice, That's multiple choice and true false. But you have this good test review, so what I would do? <laughs> I would take cards and any, all of these bu bu bulletins. Today we, do, we did the heart, and today we do blah, we do, they all go there. And then with those, I would be very diligent and do this, you know, this system with the five, uh, the five or four, four boxes. Like you review what you don't know every day, you bring it to the second set, you review that twice a week. Do with those specific pieces, do it that way and see how it turns out. That way, you, you know, cut the anxiety out. Just go straight to the process and we work with the process and then we can see how it goes. I mean, the final we have to then connect afterwards, but we can connect afterwards and have a call on it. So I, that's what I will do. I'm trying to push these cards on you as much as I can. You get that? They work so well for me. I learned when I had to learn French. In Switzerland, you've got to learn French five years. Five, no, five hours a week five, for seven years. It's like, uh, I know. I don't like languages. Can you tell? I know. All right, neutrophils, they fog aside toes. Fog means eat, eating. Remember? Phagocytosis means eating, pinocytosis means drinking. The Pinot Grigio. See, you remember that, right that way. I always remember it that way. So that means ingesting something. So when you have a cut in your skin, they show up, they give you pulse, you can say thank you, or you can say ooh, and then you say, oh wait, thank you. You know, happiness goes through gratitude. It's the only way we can get it. Everything else don't work. Happiness goes through gratitude. I mean, who who had no electricity? I mean, that's a lot of people had to like, you know, there's, there's, there's a TED talk. You know TED talk, right? Want to be happy, be grateful. It's on the new, I think it's on the neurology book. And it's this priest guy, and he's from Austria, and he goes to set, somewhere in Africa, and there's no water coming out of the faucet. Oh, today there is, great. And there is none. Then today there is. Then he goes back to Austria. There's always water. He's like, it's water. Like, ah, uh, you put a post it up, water exclamation point. <laughs> to remember to be grateful for it. That's true. Well, they do like a, a, a physical blood work appointment or physicals. Are these the type of blood tests that they review? Like are they looking at these different I cells? don't know how much they look at the white blood cells. I'm sure they do a count, but I'm not, you know, I'm not sure how, how detailed they go with the with the, with the different ones. I mean, I would think, depending, I mean, okay, so the, the neutrophils eat. The eosinophils, they, they, they work on, on attacking parasite stuff and limiting allergy stuff. That's the other one, which the basophils cause a lot of the allergy stuff. So the basophils release the histamine and heparin, that's the sneezing stuff in your nose. And all the like, you know, whatever, we want to get rid of something. That's what it is, basically, an allergic reaction. So the basophils release that to cause that, to get rid of the, the problem. Except, of course, the pollen's not going to hurt you, you know, so it's almost like a too much of a reaction. That's why we got issues with it. But then the eosinophils help you limit that allergic reaction and also then attack the parasites. Those are the two things on those. And if there's more on those uh, review sheets, let me know. I think no. And then that lit and, and, and so those three when they stain they have granules in them. See here? Those three, the first one I talk about, they have little stains on them. Little granules. And so they call them granulocytes. So when they stain them, they look like that. And then 
we actually have, see behind there in the closet, we have these plaques. And so, um, and so that's the plaques we use for the test of this stuff. And so we see there's some that have granules on them. Some granules are red, some granules you can't tell the difference between the pink and the background, and then there's one that's blue. See that? That's one that's blue. The red one, well, the, 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 new, the one that's neutral are called neutrophils. That's good. The word the stain is the same as the background, it's called neutrophils. So that's happy. Then the ones where the stain in the back is reddish or orangey or so, is the eosinophils. I think that's like neon light. Eon, neon is close enough for me. So that's red. And then the blue is basophil. I don't know, that sounds more like blue than red to me. Eon, blue, you know, is more sharp. So that's how I remember that. I don't know. And because you're gonna identify that on the test. I mean, that's a nice, easy, you know, question, really. And then we have two more, and they are called agranules, agranulocytes, because when you look at them, they don't have any granules in the back. So that's the way that they group it. You know, first we can see them, and then they have to figure out what they do. And so when we look at the agranulocytes, then we get to the B cells and the T cells. You heard of those? Yeah. Good, because we're going to do more of that soon. So we have B cells and T cells, a lymphocytes, they're called as a group. So here you've got to be careful. You have leukocytes, and those are white blood cells. Leukocyte. And then you have lymphocytes because they sit in the lymph nodes. And that, well, not all of them, but some of them. And that's B and T cells. So those are the ones, um, they are associated with a specific immunity. So when you first get sick, and we'll talk about that very shortly, but when you first get sick, you have different types of immunity. The body doesn't necessarily know when you've got a sneezy thing going on, what kind of sneezy thing that is. It just knows it's irritating. It's a problem. So it attacks it sort of generally. It gives you inflammation and that kind of stuff. So that's non-specific. And then when you get the, spe the specific one is when you have a previous exposure to something, the body learns what does that look like. That's like you get the, the chicken pox. The body will get the chicken pox once and then it knows what it looks like. And it's not gonna get the chicken pox again. So that's, so that's then specific immunity that's right, because it's, it's learned immunity. So the, body, the, the, the cell learned what that freaking pathogen looks like, and they say, oh, oh, we've seen that before, we can go kick it to the curb. And it immediately, you know, goes toss that. It doesn't have to first learn and say like, I don't know if that's bad or not. Is it really bad? You know, it doesn't have to do all that process. It just goes like, we know what to do. So that's the B cells and the T cells. And yeah, the T cells are that cell mediated, so they're literally sharp shoes. They got literally things that come out of them. They're perforants. They look like bullets. They poke on our cells' walls to make them destroy. So that's the T cells. And then the B cells make a lot of these antibodies. They make a lot of antibodies. You heard of antibodies? You heard of an antigen? So the antigen is a part of a pathogen that makes us sick. It, it actually can be anything that, that can trigger a reaction. It's an antigen because you can have a trigger against yourself. That you probably talk about that in autoimmune disease a little bit. And so an antigen always has an antibody that works with it. So the antigen is on the pathogen that makes you <laughs> sick and the antibodies from your own body's immune system to, you know, tag it, to, to glue, glue, uh, clump it together with other ones and destroy it in, in many ways it can. So that's the lymphocyte. So that's one extra one there. And then the last one we have is the monocyte. And that's also an agranulocyte. And that's, um, it's a phagocytoser. It destroys things, bacteria, fungi, parasites, work, all of that stuff. It's part of that non-specific immunity. So it sees, it's like kind of like the neutrophil in some ways, but it's big often. And it's often um, resident in the tissue. So we have some 
monocytes in the bone, osteoclasts. Those actually were monocytes. You know, in the research, we go and look at stuff. We don't know exactly where the origin is when we first find things. So in the lungs, we got the dust cells. In the kidneys, we got the, I mean, the liver, we got the kupfer cells. In the skin, we have the long runs. Those are all resident, these kind of suckers that help us in the tissue itself. I like the term dust cells, they dust the lungs. They clean up. So you know, that's kind of, and then often what happens is those pick up one of those pathogen things that we call, an, we say an antigen because it's the reactive portion we talk about, um, and, and eat it, and then they show it to their surface and say like, hey, I got something. Come on, get it. So they, they become an antigen presenting cell, an APC, that then these puppies can pick up and say like, oh, we gotta do something about it. So the, the B and the T cells have a reaction with that. So they have their T cell kills? Hmm? Is that what the T cell kills? Hmm? Well, the T cell does attack this, but only at its effect, and no one is not affected. But when it sends your molecular alarm, it's like, bee, 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 you know, then it, it learns, but the main thing for us, the important thing is the learning. So then, you know, this is where that, that non-specific immunity, something comes into the system, and this puppy eats it, it's like, okay, I got one, and then it shows it to the specific immunity, and that's sort of the learning process. Yeah, it's very interesting. I know, and there they are, those beautiful things. So let's see, back to this. Eosinophils. Which ones? Good. So you want these bullet points with these things, you know? Because ultimately you learn more, of course, of them, more detail, but it goes back to that stuff of what you want to remember really. Have you heard of B cells, T cells? Yeah, we just talked about. They live in live in lymphoid organs, such as the lymph nodes, where they encounter pathogens and learn how to recognize specific ones once exposed to them. They then very harshly fight that specific type of pathogens and blah, blah, the next time they encounter them, what do we call them collectively? Oh, I could have gone to the rest of that, huh? That one. So again, lymphocytes are not leukocytes. Mm -hmm. Those are the whole, all the white blood cells. The lymphocytes are only B and T cells. And oh, on the plaque. And then we get to the plaque. On the plaque. And on the plaque, these are red ones. Guess what those are? Those are red blood cells. So that's also on the test. You want those on the test. And then the big ones here with the, with the, with the pink background, we have to look at all of them, um, how they look, but pink background here. Uh, those are the uh, monocytes, and then the one with the marble background, those are the lymphocytes. Wait, lymphocytes are the ones which ones? Marble background. Oh, yes. Now where's the white? Who white what? Where's the white blood cells? They're all white blood cells. Well, no, the white blood cells are all those five types. Those what? Those five different types. They don't look white. They just don't look oh. red. Okay. You know, the other ones are the red Sweet. blood cells. So I think that's why I call them white blood cells. And then the blue little dots, what would those be? The blue little dots? You know, those little fragments. Uh, no, nope. platelets. Uh, platelets. Platelets. Oh. Then we have them all down there. <laughs> Platelets. We'll get to those in a second. Um, so this one, who we call activated monocytes, we just talked about when they eat the antigen. Mm -hmm. Come on, anybody? What's the question? What, are you what do we call, next question here, when we look at the monocytes, yeah, I'm back up here. We look at the monocytes, they live in different tissue, uh, tissues. When they eat stuff and then they present it on their surface, what do we call them at that point? What do we call those activated? We just APC. talked about them. APCs. Yeah, so that's the antigen presenting cell. And there's two, or there's two. 
Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. Also the dendritic cells. You got that? There's an AK in there somewhere. Yeah, when the box is not round, it's two or three inches. I know, they gave me a lot of choices. Did you see that? Some filling ones? I know, huh? Question. Now we get to the cutting of a blood vessel. The problem is the blood code leaks out. Body uses a very uh, well thought out process to patch up that leak. The problem is you, you have to be, you can only patch up a blood vessel if the patching process happens inside the non-broken blood vessel. You gotta coagulate blood. And that means you're not gonna get anything more through. So that's very, very bad. So it's a very, very delicate process. Um, what do we call the cell fragments that play a role, a major role in blood clotting? Thrombocytes and Good. Thrombocytes is sort of the technical term, and everybody says platelets. So we say platelets. Although it's nice, you know, to pronounce these goofy names. There we go. They are made again in a bone marrow, made by called megakaryocytes. Mega means it's big. And then they explode, and the fragments are the, the fragments are the um, platelets. They are very short-lived, five to ten days, but they are a major player in the coagulation process. So let's see what we talk about the coagulation process. To prevent loss after the injury, vessels around it will tighten and narrow to minimize the loss. That makes sense, right? You want to not have all the blood go through that air. Platelets then deposit around the cup. That makes them sticky, so they cling to one another, creating a plug. The next step is the trickiest one because the fiber, that's a soluble fiber, you know, like Metamucil or something. Um, is is in the blood and it needs to get become an insoluble fiber and precipitate out to be able to be holding on to things um, and so that's what happens and so uh, what do you say let me read again the fibers the block is activated making them able to help patch up the vessel injury and then at the end once the vessel is healed an enzyme dissolves the plug what is that enzyme called plasma plasma Plasmin. I know it's one of those enzymes that is not called an ASC at the end. Plasmin. Plasmin. See, that's a nice word. That's that whole spiel. See, that's a long process. We just talk about the last step. It's like 12, 13 steps. Yeah, I don't want to memorize all of them. It's enough that somebody did it. And a plasmin dissolves. The patch, which at this point is called a thrombus, blah, blah, right, at some point. But look at that, that technique called fibro, fibrinolysis. Remember lysosomes? What do lysosomes do? Something very important. Digestion, right? Yeah. They eat stuff, they destroy stuff. So lys, fibrinolysis, lysis, whenever you see the word lysis, you think of taking apart, destroying, killing, all that kind of stuff. So the plasmin gets rid of the fibrin, the, the fiber, so they call it fibrinolysis at the technical term. So that's how you read these terms. Slow reading, not fast reading. Good, let's move right along. Blood plasma is mostly water with proteins, nutrients, and salt is often it. Proteins in the blood have many uses. Some help establish osmotic pressure. What? Remember in chemistry when we did the salt on the tomato? And the salt, the blood, all of a sudden the salt's gone and you got a drop of water on the tomato. You never done that? No. Yeah, you told us. Didn't I tell you to do that? Ah, oh, there you go. So yeah, so that's osmosis. Uh, tomato, when you let the salt sit for a few minutes, you can see the water drop or replacing the salt crystals because the salt is a solute and it's pulling the water out. If the tomato on the inside is saltier than the salt crystal you put it on, nothing will happen. The salt will drag the water into the tomato. 
But if not, which is not, you know, salt crystals very dense. And so <coughs> the water will come out and they pull it out. And so that's osmosis. Water is following solutes. So the water is pulled by the solutes. And so we can use that in the blood vessel. We have some proteins that can pull liquid into the tissues once the liquid leaves the in, you know, when we get the, the blood coming into the tissues, the capillaries, the blood leaks out into the tissue. And how are you going to get that blood back into the tissue, into the, in, I mean, into the blood vessel, to then bring it back to the heart? And so that's where we use that osmosis. And what of the um, molecules in the body, in the blood, do we use to do that process with? That one? Yeah, albumin. 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 Good. Let's look at that a little bit. So there's the functions of proteins, many functions. You look at the whole plasma, mostly it's water. Some of it is just regular stuff like um, uh, nutrients, vitamins, hormones, and then you have a bunch of proteins, about 7% of the whole thing. And the big, you know, there we have a lot of functions. We, uh, has have LDLs, HDLs, transport in the, uh, for, for lipid stuff, we have blood clotting stuff in there, and we have antibodies for the immune system, but then we have that osmotic pressure, and then the albumin is the one that does that. Who? Albumin. Why, did that spell it differently, Oscar? Huh? Oh, shoot. Oh, good catch. I, I. <laughs> Trust the booklet had more revisions than this is not is in the revision process. And I have to remember to co correct that for the next class. Right? Another protein functions to transport fats around the body. Oh, look at that, we just talked about. Fats don't like to be in water. They are hydrophobic and aggregate or clump together. That's what aggregate means. Think of oil and vinegar in an Italian salad dressing, not ranch. You gotta shake. Uh, you gotta shake it before you can pour it all the side. Do you know Thousand Islands? There's no Thousand Islands in Switzerland. So when it first came to America, I was like, hey, the Thousand Islands dressing. So I thought I gotta have Thousand. So you I start eating salad with ketchup one time. <laughs> that was never good. Like oh, I don't eat that Thousand Islands thing. Anyway. <laughs> So the fat is not water friendly. So we need to put the fat into something when we want to travel around in the water, which is the blood, it's the water. And so uh, liver is very important for fat processing. Uh, and then from there, some proteins, lipoproteins, carry the fats from the liver to the body, but then others collect them and bring them back to the liver. Oh, nice. Very nice. So. We call that the good cholesterol. Which one is it? HDL. 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 Good. We got that down. There you go. HDL, LDL, VLDL. But at least, you know, when you know it brings it back to the liver, you know why it's good. So that was kind of cool before I didn't know that. And then we get to the antibodies and look at all these groups. So this is, I put this up here. Not that you need to study these different antibody groups in this class, but I think this is a nice little description of them for later on. Because if I remember all of those details, I'm, I think I'll pass the nursing class. You know, I'm not sure, or even the, depending on which classes I have to take. Um, an article, that's the antibodies. Part of specific immunity attacking specific pathogens in part by poking holes into their walls. They also bind to antigens and pass it by tagging them for destruction by the white blood cells. What is the tagging process called? Opsonization. Opsonization. Ah, isn't that nice, these words? Opsonization, where are we there? Somewhere up there, right there you go. Opsonization. And I have a feeling that brings us to the red blood cells again. Four irons, each of them can pick up an oxygen and then it travels through the lungs. So when you go to the lungs, 
There's oxygen in the lungs, the air sacs, and the blood just sucks it in like a magnet. It just comes right in. Um, but then when we get to the tissues, it sucks it right back out into the tissues, which is good. We want that. But then the tissues uses the oxygen to make ATP, and then we got a byproduct. Ugh. And that's CO2, right? So how does CO2 travel to the body? Most of it. A lot of it is that bicarbonate ion thing. Okay, so that's that's it does not, for the majority, travel through the hemoglobin. That's basically the main point on that one. So the oxygen goes through the hemoglobin, the carbon dioxide, most of it goes through the bicarbonate ions, which are the ones. Oh, block groups, good. Which the bicarbonate ions are the ones we talk about balancing the acidity in the body. You know, the balancing out the pH. So that's a great, that's like Alka Seltzer. That's why it works. Oops, I told me to put some bicarbonate ions in it. I know. Um, each hemoglobin contains four irons. Each of them, wait, we did that, right? Yeah. Challenge, oh, good. The challenge with giving someone a knee plot is the fact that it might not be compatible and cause a bad transfusion reaction in the recipient. RBCs have markers on their surface that identify them. So that's like, um, they have markers on their surface that say, this is me, this is my son. So my, all they have crystal on it. And so, I mean, it doesn't spell it out, but that's all the glycokelic. So other cells, all the other cells recognize, oh, it's one of us. Hi. If it doesn't have that marker, something's wrong. So there's some body cells that never see that process of doing that with them. And when they come out like an intervertebral disc and they get squeezed out all of a sudden into an environment where we feel that they get attacked. It's an inflammatory process. Anyway, that's besides the point. Um, those markers, antigens, are those markers are antigens. So they are actually markers that make some reaction. They don't have to be on a pathogen. The antigen is just a reaction creator. Okay, most of it is associated with making us sick. But it doesn't have to. We also have them on red blood cells. And so if markers on a so if you give somebody a blood with an antigen on their on their blood cell that they don't recognize, the immune system is gonna attack it. That's a problem. And when it attacks it, what happens? Well you get blood clumping and you die. I mean you can. <laughs> So that's a problem. So um, those markers cause an immune reaction in the recipient's own RBCs that don't have um, those markers on their own blood cells when they get blood, and the body thinks it's a foreign substance. So then the body, you know, has a reaction to it. So and then that's a problem. That's a big problem. So there's multiples of these things of blood cells, many of them, but so a couple things cause reactions. And that's that ABO system and then the RH system. Those are the ones we want to know about. And so in the ABO system, how many antigens do we actually differentiate? Two. Two. And it's that complicated. Oh, look at that. That's the last one. Could you try again? Sorry. Hello. See, look at it. We got a whole bunch of different marker types, but not all of them make us sick. And so we got to figure out in the ABO system, like if you want to get blood, you got to make sure you get the right blood. So you want to make sure you don't get the blood with the wrong, these are the antigens here, these are the antigens. Oh yeah, no, here it says antigens, hold on. But in A, the antigen we have is called an antigen A. If you have that blood in your system, your system does not have antibodies for the antigen A, otherwise you would attack it all the time. Right? But your system has antibodies, antibodies for the B type, the other antigen, the second one. And so then the second blood has is B, so it's it's antigens or Bs. 
Again, that part is not going to have antibody B because the attack is no good. So they have the antibodies A. So they actually call them anti A. They, they call anti for antibody. I know antigen also starts with anti, so I don't know. But it's antibody, so. So the, the other thing you need to understand now is the blood description. So if you if your group A, the blood is is described by what antigen you have. All right, so if you have group A, you have A antigens. If we have group B, you have B antigens. And you have the opposite antibody. So they just say A type and B type, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so you got A type, you're going to have antibodies for B in your system. So you don't want to get which one? B. Yeah. You get B, oh, they're good. Only A. Or, yeah, no. Or O, or O. Right, so then there is some people, lucky, non lucky people. No, they're actually good. They have A and B. They don't have antibodies. So, they are the lucky ones. You can't do nothing with their blood, practically, but they can take everybody's blood, because nobody reacts to them. I mean, what's the most common blood type? God. Anybody know? Isn't it O? No. No, I think it's A, but I'm not totally sure. I think it's A. See, if it were a bone, I would know about it. <laughs> Then we have a fourth type. Okay, so now we have this no, nothing, no antigens. Perfect blood. You can give this blood to everybody. Nobody cares about anything. But you can only get it. But you have antibodies for both of those suckers. So you can only get your own blood. The whole. So we want a lot of O's, but we don't want to be the O's, necessarily. We don't want the ABs, but we want to be the ABs. So now we can go with this costume thing, right? So, so if if you, so this we got these kids in there, and I don't find the descriptions, but maybe we want to do it anyway. So if you, you take a blood A. No, you take a blood, and it reacts when you put a serum in that is you know, from a blood that has antibodies B in it, and your blood does not clump, what would you think your blood type would be? Um, Definitely A, right? A. Definitely A. And um, what was I saying? <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> No, your blood type would definitely be A, but it also can be AB okay. if it doesn't react. If it does react, then you know you got you got the B because you're gonna react and or you could be the O if it reacts. Um, I looked it up, O is the most common. Is it? Uh, yeah. Well good. There we go. I'm glad to be wrong about this. Uh, no, it's like those things, they escape. As soon as I hear it, they escape my brain. Maybe now I remember it better because you told me. Yes? Oh, good question. Positive and negative, right here. So then we have the RH factor. And I'm going to get these handouts for this stuff. We're going to at some point do that lab, I think. So that was the RH is because of the rhesus monkey. So they got they got uh, discovered when guinea pig were injected and they got problems. They're, um, they agglutinate. And so they, they were working on figuring it out. So people are either RH negative or RH positive. It's not an A and a B. It's just an RH. It's just one marker. But the interesting thing with that marker is you need to be exposed to to the RH antigen. So you need, if you are a negative person, you need to be exposed to the positive antigens more than once. 
The first time, your body does not know what to do with it, and it's like primes itself like you get, it's like the same with the flu shot or the same with the chicken pox. The first time, your reaction is very slow. And so it's not going to react. It's very slow. But the body knows, oh, look at that. We've got to make antibodies. And so then the system at that point is primed and has antibodies. And then the second exposure, no good. So if you are negative, are negative and have a second exposure, then you, go in, then you are in trouble. And so that's what that is. So this becomes a problem when a mother gives labor to an RH positive child, she's negative, and some of the child's RBC spill over to the maternal blood, it's sensitizing the blood. In the second pregnancy to an RH positive baby, the mother's blood now having antibodies cross into the blood of the baby, and then the blood of the baby will eclipse. That's not good. This can be a really stupid question. How do you Well, just I don't know that, actually. Genes. You just have one or the other. Oh, okay. Oh, genes. Your genes. Okay. You got Levi's or you got the other one? It's just not something. It's already in you. It's in you. Yeah, yeah, it's in you. It's in you. The question is just, if you have it, your body's not going to make antibodies. It's just used to that stuff. If you don't have it, your body doesn't know about it, but it learns about it, and then it makes the antibodies. Right. Don't they give you some kind of medicine? Yeah. Then yes, broken. They give you Rogam so this doesn't happen with the baby. Right. But you got to know about it. That's why you, you go to the doctor when you're pregnant. It's one of the reasons. Just one of the reasons. <laughs> but don't you like the footsie? <laughs> I love the footsie. <laughs>